explain it to an undergraduate. And so they've actually developed some um, uh, elective modules for undergraduate students, and they're trialing that in three universities now. So, because uh, I don't know about you, but I did not know what research administration was when I was an undergraduate. So, yeah, I don't know if I'd have chosen it still, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. I think it is time for us to start. It's 11.45 a.m. Um, let me do a few household items. Please remain muted during the presentation. Any questions that you might have, please put them in chat. And the session is being recorded. Um, well, first, good morning. It's still morning here. And welcome everyone to Simon and Melinda's lunch session. If you zoomed in a little bit earlier this morning, so you know who they are and where they're coming from. But I would still offer some introduction because they're very interesting people. So Simon has over 25 years experience in research uh, management and administration and has headed up a couple of research support offices in the UK. He has served on the UK ARMA board and is currently on the European EA ARMA board and has present, uh, presented widely and written a little and would love to talk acronyms such as RAP, Credit and J-O-R-M-A, <laughs> if I did it right. <laughs> Simon lives in the southeast of England and relaxes by walking with his poor dog. And I saw pictures of those dogs, they're adorable. So Melinda has over 10 years experience as a research administrator and has worked in both pre and post award positions. She holds both a CRA and CPRA and has presented nationally from QRA and SRA and on various research administration topics. She's living on a farm in the National Forest of South Carolina. Melinda enjoys whitewater kayaking, gardening, and hanging out with a family of three dogs, eight cats, and 18 chickens. Floor is yours. Fantastic. I thought you were going to say uh, whitewater gardening, which would perhaps would have been even more interesting. Well, when I get my hose out, it is. <laughs> ah, yes. Good point. That was uh, probably the best quote. Um, okay, well, here we are, uh, international speed dating. And um, we have a few slides to kick it off, but we're hoping to make it very interactive. Um, and I suppose I'm, I'm going to cut right to the chase and say, um, Linda and I have worked a lot together over the last couple of years because um, we met and we'll we'll tell you how we met. We've never actually met met, but that's, that's by the by, that's another story. Um, and uh, we have here a, a little thing uh, that we wrote together, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to all of that. So really what we wanna talk about is uh, what is it that you might want to do in order to try and develop your network, why you might wanna actually develop your network. And I am as usual talking over the sorts of things which Melinda should be talking about on the next slide. <laughs> So the overview of the session, um, we'll start with telling you a little bit about ourselves. Um, we wish that we were all hanging out in a coffee shop or at an actual conference, but um, we'll share some of the reasons why we enjoy maintaining this international connection, um, how it's enhanced our personal and professional lives, and then we'll talk about how to begin making those connections, how to maintain the relationships once established, and then some practical next steps. And then of course, with this intimate group that we have, we should have a lively discussion at the end. I like that, we should have a, a lively discussion. I'm we not will sure. have a lively discussion. Okay, we will, We're, even if it's just the two of us, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know, yellow font on a green background. Uh, you'll get the slides after us, should you be desperate to know about it. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this is me, you know, uh, as Lena said, you know, 25 years, um, and I'm actually a bit of a bizarre person. I have a, a doctorate in research management, so that's uh, relatively rare. I don't know how useful it is, but I enjoy doing it. Um, and I've done quite a few sort of uh, national roles in in the UK and I've uh, mentioned one thing there the metric tide which is which is quite interesting because um, it was a big collaborative affair uh, so it, at the time I was the chair of the UK association chair of armor um, and we got invited by our uh, the equivalent of our federal funders um, to nominate a person um, and they wanted the chair so I said yes of course fine um, and it was to look at um, the role of metrics in research assessment so things like journal impact factor for example um, and basically we 
we spent about a year working together um, with you know, sort of academics, people from funders and so on. And there's a big report uh, which basically says that uh, you know, metrics citation counts are, are not a good uh, measure of the quality of uh, research output uh, and you shouldn't use them. And um, the funny thing is that the report itself has now had nearly a thousand citations. So it's, yeah, I, I just think it's quite amusing. Um, I'm a, uh, <laughs> a big advocate for uh, for open research and, uh, and, uh, and open everything. Thing. So I've done a, you know, a, a few sort of uh, projects and committee work on that sort of thing. Um, dogs have been mentioned, so I should I show my social distancing. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Melinda. Yeah. Uh, so th there they are, spread apart by the equivalent of uh, two meters if you if you scale it down. Sorry, six feet. You know what I meant. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I have done a little bit of time on the uh, Cura uh, Select Committee for, for Global Affairs and was a, uh, a global fellow where I visited um, University of uh, Columbia. And I'm one of the people I met there was Jamie, who's uh, on this call. So nice to see you, Jamie. Um, I am currently on the European uh, Association board, as was mentioned, and um, we'll probably mention uh, this uh, Rapper 3 project, but we'll, we'll save that for, uh, for later. But um, that's uh, something that we talked about this morning. But in case you weren't there, we'll just give you a, a reprise. Don't, no more slides, don't worry. Um, yeah, uh, I also teach on the Johns Hopkins Masters in British Research Administration, unsurprisingly, on the uh, international uh, uh, concentration on that. So. Um, you know, if you happen to be doing or want to do a, a master's in research uh, administration and you, and you choose Johns Hopkins, then you can elect uh, to listen to me for 14 weeks or 15 weeks it is, as it is now. So that's a really great idea, isn't it? Um, one of the other things I, I spent... Bad jokes. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I'll, I'll, actually, I didn't tell a joke last session. I've, oh, okay. Yeah, I've got one. It's not a new one, but never mind. Um, and I also do a little bit of work uh, on um, supporting uh, research managers in writing uh, research articles. So there's the uh, JRA, the um, the SRA's Journal of Research Administration, have an author fellowship program uh, where we basically provide support and peer mentoring um, for uh, for people who are kind of halfway through or developing an idea uh, and actually want some support in in, in writing uh, for that. Um, I'm also uh, an editor of the sort of I guess European equivalent so the Journal of Research Management Administration uh yeah okay that's probably enough about me uh I have dogs as mentioned and this is my favorite photograph of uh Chloe running towards me uh okay. e ears flapping that's a great one so look at that rainbow yes that's a, actually a picture that I took walking into my office um, prior to the pandemic, still didn't have any idea what was about to happen, um, but it was like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and I just happened to capture, it's actually a double rainbow, but I don't think you can see, but I am Melinda Fisher, and I work at Clemson University, and I usually say sunny South Carolina, but most of the people here, the participants are from Florida, so it's not quite as sunny as Florida, but sunny enough. Um, like many of you, I worked from home until about mid-April and returned to campus, um, which was exhausting. You know, the it was exhausting both ways, going home, figuring out how to, you know, move through this new life. And then the reverse of that going back was also exhausting. Back to hating my commute, the endless parking spot hunt, and not being able to wear leggings 24-7 is a real drag sometimes. Um, founded in 1889, Clemson University is a land-grant institution that was established on the traditional and ancestral land of the Cherokee people. Clemson has established a land acknowledgement as a first step toward education and action toward decolonization, racial justice, and service to all of the communities in our state. I live nearby on a 40-acre farm that's totally surrounded by mountainous national forest. Um, as Elena said, I have four kids, three dogs, eight cats, 17 hens, and one really obnoxious rooster who is pictured here. Um, I'm a pre-award grants administrator, currently managing the College of Education's grant support office. I've also worked with behavioral sciences, public health sciences, nursing, PRTM. I earned my CRA and CPRA credentials in 2018 and attended every single webinar I could offered on the internet during quarantine to maintain those credentials. That was also exhausting. I've been in research administration for 13 years, starting in post-award at the departmental level, 
and moved into pre-award at the college level. It says, it says 12 here. I'm just saying, sorry to interrupt your flow, but I mean, you know, what can I say? Sorry. Thanks. I need to update my slide. Yeah. Um, I've been involved with the Clemson University Staff Senate um, for several years, stepping up as president this coming April, and I'm serving as the sponsorship coordinator for Encura's Region 3. Prior to having children, I was a whitewater raft guide on the Chattooga River. If you've ever seen Deliverance, that's where it was filmed. Um, I do still enjoy kayaking, but research administration is about all the adrenaline I think I need anymore. <laughs> What did you say? PTR? I don't understand that. PRTM, acronym. Sorry, Parks, Recreation and Tourism. OK, Parks and Recreation. I've heard of that, but yeah. OK, fine. It's a TV show, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Well done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I believe we may have a poll coming up now, right? Do you know, it's almost like we practice these slides. Yes, look at uh, that. So right. see if you can take control. So, so if while you want to use the QR code with your phone's camera. Oh, I can't do it this time. Hmm. You can't, you can't do it. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, do you want me to stop the share and you can grab yes. it? Okay. Let's try that. Hey, there's more people than when we started. That's good. It's normally the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it looks like our poll is in progress right now. We have two respondents. Would you say you're an extrovert? Where are you on this sliding scale between extrovert and introvert? Is that a sliding slido scale? Are you going to vote, Simon? Sure. OK, if you if you give me time, I'll, I just need to get my phone yeah. out, though. I'm going to vote, too. OK. Is there something about producing biased results by undertaking your own research or something? So. Well, we're not going to publish, so it'll be all right. Well, that's what you think. I'm going to do a screenshot. Uh, right. Cool. And send. All right. It looks like invert wins the day. Yeah, and it's not even a word, except it is a word, but uh, PowerPoint doesn't understand it. I've got the red squiggles. Oh. Ooh. So it looks like we have a lot of people who feel like they're in the middle. Okay, well, that's that's good. And then fewer extroverts than anything else. So, all right, I will stop sharing now. Oh, okay. Shares back up. Apologies, y'all. Yeah. We in the first session we were able to uh, seamlessly switch screens, but that is okay. But we've created some seams this time. Um, okay, so. Uh, the upshot is everyone's different, and no matter whether you answered A, B, C, D, or E, we have something for you. If you answered F, you can leave now. <laughs> cool. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about advantages of building an international network. Um, as humans, we depend on so many different kinds of networks for survival. Uh, food distribution, social networks, vaccine distribution networks. Professional networks are similarly advantageous, especially for research administrators. When policies, procedures, and requirements change at the speed of light, and the answer is frequently, it depends, a network of similarly focused peers enhances and broadens our knowledge base and can fill in gaps in our understanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. Soft skills like effective communication are increasingly important in our field. When speaking with a PI or a program officer, I'm sure you're all aware, knowing how to ask the right question is often more important than having harder technical skills perfected, like, excuse me, <clears throat> than like generating reports or balancing a budget to the penny. Learning to communicate with a broad cross section of peers, both national and international, can help you expand your skills to better express yourself and understand differing perspectives. When you work with sponsors only once a year or even once every five years, that can be nerve wracking for the pre-award research administrator, trying to interpret every nuanced line in the RFP without a clear understanding of that sponsor's mission or outlook can result in rejected proposals, no matter how well written or important the work of the project may be. Having peers you can reach out to who deal with these sponsors more frequently can help you and your PI better understand the requirements a particular sponsor is looking for and lead to better outcomes. 
finding a mentor or a peer, thank you, Simon, with whom you and your specific area are closely aligned can be the best career move you can make. If you typically apply to USDA 10 times or more a year, and I see you, Melissa, on this call, thank you, um, you may be able to offer someone living in a different part of the world your expertise. Likewise, that person may be able to counsel you on applying to the Welcome Trust or some other agency or foundation that accepts international submissions, helping you position the faculty with whom you work to be global researchers. Finding a mentor can happen through several different avenues. You can enter into an official mentoring program through ARMA or Incura or one of the other professional organizations. You can find someone on social media who always seems to post about things you're either interested in or aspire to work with. Reach out, you've got nothing to lose. Your career can be taken to the next level based on who you meet and what they know. Also, it's just plain fun and interesting to meet and chat with people in different places. Um, discussing everyday mundane things with someone from a different country takes on a whole new perspective. Try playing Wordle with Simon. <laughs> At the end of a recent conversation, Simon said he was feeling grotty. Growing up in, the Amer in America in the 80s, all I could think of was the Valley Girl expression, like, oh my God, that's so grody. And uh, turns out it's kind of similar, not exactly the same, but you know, finding those interesting diff differences and similarities has become one of mine and Simon's favorite pastimes. I cannot believe that wordle where there was a U missing from the word. I, favorite, I, it was favorite, I, and I was so excited. I almost didn't get it. I thought, well, I mean, come on it's, it's not a word i oh i can't believe you mentioned wordle right okay and did you really pronounce it groaty or was that no Gro i said grotty but you did okay. say grody no grody so. like gag me with a spoon oh right okay that's fine um yeah okay i think i lied when i said there wasn't going to be a slide about rap so apologies for that but i i didn't want to scare anyone off but we didn't use this one this morning so for those of you who were this morning then yeah so this is the big takeaway from from the rap one so which we ran in, in 2016 uh we had 2691 responses uh and the uh, the question was uh all to do with which of these skills are most important to you in your role um so we uh we asked people what level they were at. So were they operational staff you know, at, at the coal face, uh, managerial um, re research administrator, so, so the head of a team, or you know, the, the leader of the sponsored projects, um, you know, or research support, whatever it might be. Um, and then looking at the, the technical skills required to undertake their role, how important are they? So the, the yellow, which you see a little bit of, oh, it's extremely important. Um, the, the purple is uh, very important and the, uh, the lovely beige is, uh, yeah, it's important and, you know, less important and not important at all. Um, so the surprise to us was that the technical skills become more important as you move up the career ladder. Um, I kind of thought that maybe if, when you became a leader, you might have staff to do all of these things for you. So you didn't need those technical skills. So I don't know what we read into this. Maybe maybe the leaders don't trust their staff or they feel that they need to keep um, uh, that, that, that technical skill so that they can understand it or maybe to pick up any particular difficult issues if they occur. Uh, however, that's one story. The big takeaway from this slide is if you look at the soft skills, so the transferable skills, things like communication, collaboration, and so on, you can say we now get a whole load of yellow. So this is extremely important. So it, it's extremely important for operational staff for some of them, and very important for almost 50% compared with the kind of the 5% for the, for the technical skills here. And that increases and increases probably at a higher rate as well. So basically, the takeaway from this slide is uh, soft skills are more important than the hard technical skills uh, for any level of research administrator. Uh, and I guess if you're thinking about uh, promotion, then maybe it's those soft skills. So you could perhaps view it as being you know, the hard technical skills are the ones which might get you the job because you need them on, on your CV. Uh, but the, the soft skills, how you how you deal with people and how you cope with problems are the ones uh, that, that are going to get you uh, promoted. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we, we give this talk here, because we're talking about soft skills and, and, and networking. Uh, you'll notice a lovely QR code on the side there. Uh, 
if any of you thought it was another Slido, then we've tricked you into it. That's actually a link to uh, the, the next <laughs> uh, RAP questionnaire, the, the RAP3 questionnaire, which we alluded to, um, which um, focuses not so much on the skills and not on research impact, which the second one uh, was, but this one is uh, Hibama, how I became a research manager and administrator. So what route brought you into the profession? So we were looking at uh, how people arrive at or are attracted to the, to the profession. Um, but uh, yeah, do uh, do take a, a quick quick snap of that and uh, do the presentation later. Actually, do the questionnaire later. Actually, also, we recommend not doing it on your phone because yeah. Have, also, don't do it on your phone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and we also recommend maybe not doing it now. But if you want to do it during a boring present, oh yeah, do it now. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. We don't care if, if we don't do it. If we get another six responses, then that's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. Wait till you get home uh, in the you are at home what am i talking about in the comfort of a big screen and you, you'll, you'll go through it in no time at all but spoiler alert it does take about 20 minutes but please 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 fill it in it'll be great uh sorry that was a bit of a side advert do apologize for that all right so we're going to talk a little bit now about volunteering for professional organizations um volunteering to serve on committees is a great way to begin expanding your network there are several different professional organizations to choose from, and most of them have an org chart on their website. So you can go and, and check out, you know, the pertinent information regarding what each of the different roles means, the requirements, and who to contact if you're interested. Another way to insert yourself into organizational networks is to attend the business meetings. They're not boring. Sometimes they occur during or after a conference or annual meeting. Um, others will send email notices letting you know when they occur. Sign up and attend. It'll not only provide a greater understanding of how the organization operates, but you'll learn more about the other people who are either involved with or similarly interested in that organization. These organizations are always looking for volunteers, and it's a really great way to build your network out. Um, seems like in-person conferences may become more the norm again. Omicron, please go away. These are an excellent opportunity to broaden your network. You can meet people at the breakfast table, in hallways, at the gym, at the pool, sitting beside them during a session. A surefire way to meet people, though, is to volunteer in some capacity. You can volunteer to facilitate a hospitality room. Um, that happen during the evenings um, of conferences. And then you can also um, go to the website, identify the volunteer coordinator and reach out to them and ask what else is available for each of the meetings and conferences. Um, just thinking about your strengths and what you may be interested in, take a leap and put your name forward for an opportunity you see, see or hear about. A very wise friend of mine, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Simon, um, told me earlier this year when I was contemplating whether or not I was truly qualified for an opportunity I was interested in that people who identify as female were a lot more likely to let opportunities pass them by because they didn't think they were qualified. So he said, don't overthink it. If you're interested and you have the bandwidth, do it. Apply or put your name forward. The worst thing that can happen is that nothing will happen and nothing will change. And, and what happened? You became staff senate president? No, you were going to do that anyway. <laughs> probably was but I've just had a lot of fun getting to know you and we've presented together a lot you know it's just it's really enriched my personal and professional life you're like, so easily oh, pleased wow, right? <laughs> yeah exactly I said you're so easily pleased okay next slide please okay so there's a picture of a lovely conference wouldn't we all love to be in person right now Do you know where it is that's the I norms right yeah where do you know which yeah, was that uh, blog? it was no. the one in in Melbourne, twenty sixteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Th they had they had a little petting zoo around the side. They brought uh, animals in, had a koala and a, a big. Why uh, we have a get... picture of that then? Maybe it wasn't deemed to be professional enough. I don't know. All right. Well, I already touched on this earlier, but um, when we're looking, conferences are a great way to expand your network. Um, at meals, look for the tables already seated with people you don't know or whom you recognize as visiting internationals if you can. Breaking out of your comfort zone to talk to new people during meals is a great way to expand your network and it makes them feel more comfortable and at home. Finding common interests is easier to do when you have a dedicated space and time to talk. Don't be shy. Introduce yourself and be a good listener. Exchange business cards or social media handles. 
online conferences make it a little bit more challenging to have hallway or meeting conversations, but also not without their own unique opportunities. Like FRAC, you see, you may see the same people over and over in the sessions you attend, or someone may make a particularly interesting comment or pose a question that you also had in the chat, reach out to them. And that's already happened to me three times during the FRAC conference. So it's, it's definitely got merit. Um, also, there's the ability to chat privately with someone in the chat box. Use it, reach out to people and introduce yourself. Once you've established a connection with someone during a conference or meeting, keep that conversation going by following up with your email or social media. LinkedIn is a great next step. So is requesting a contact ad with the Incura Collaborate platform. By following up through one of these methods, you ensure that you are remembered and it gives you both a record of names and contact info so you can remain connected. So thanks for those of you. Um, I know a couple of you here in this uh, presentation um, reached out with LinkedIn requests after our presentation this morning and I'm excited to be connected. Yeah, but nobody invited me. I, I haven't checked my email, it's possible. <laughs> So, uh, Melinda, we have a question uh, from Ian, which is a really great and tricky question. Uh, but he said, "But he says it's especially for you." No, he says especially for you. So I'm, that's why I'm feeling it to you. Uh, how do you how do you balance all of the things you're volunteering for, and the core job and your personal life? So, I I run. <laughs> I run so, and run, run and run, and process everything while I'm running, and then. So you add a fourth thing into the mix. Is that what you're saying? It helps. It helps me anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. some people turn to meditation. Some people um, drink. I guess I do that too. But <laughs> while you're running. No. Um, I, you know, it is definitely a balancing act. Ian, thanks for asking that question. And it's going to be especially interesting for me this coming year. So I'll get back to you via LinkedIn next year and let you know how it turned out. I mean, I think, I guess the way I would answer that is uh, that, yeah, absolutely, it's a balancing act. And I, and I suppose it's a question of, of priorities, if you know what it is that you want to get from your networking activity. So uh, Melinda's example about a, uh, a Welcome Trust grant, for example, um, then it can actually save you time. But what you probably find with a, with a network is that you will have, you know, you'll develop depending on those people that you get on well with maybe Melinda's in that list I'm not sure then those are the ones that you know you don't mind keeping contact with because it's not a chore it's something you enjoy doing oh, I wonder what's happening and then when that sort of work-related issue comes along actually you know if I want to know uh, something about the uh, Department of Education Melinda's all over that I you know it would take me longer to work out how to find the website with the information on than it would be to just drop a quick email so it, it actually saves me time um but yeah it, it is a balancing act and you know some people sort of come and go in your network depending on what's happening um but if you just sort of keep keep things simmering along then I, then I think that's 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 the way to go um but yeah it, it can be problematic you could spend all your time on social media and all your time on LinkedIn and all your time on Zoom calls. Oh no, we do, don't we? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you do have to to have that balance. But I, I guess the thing to do is is have a particular sort of target in mind. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that helps. We'll find out. Okay, um, time for me to uh, say something interesting, erudite, and informative. I'll go for at least one of those three. So, uh, writing and publishing. For those of you who are perhaps less zoomy, uh, less wanting to type questions into uh, you know, interactive boxes, uh, less wanting to raise their hand in conference because you are more of the introvert, and I can't remember where that was on the scale. I think that was D, wasn't it? I'm so introverted, I don't even want to press the D button. Uh, then actually, yeah, maybe maybe d uh, maybe writing is 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 the thing for you it's something that you can do yourself it's personal um and uh you don't have to interact with other people uh, having said that you can of course uh, co-author things and you can see i would say a, a photo it's sort of almost a, a caricature of um some some handsome fellow uh wearing um i was going to call it a jumper but i think you call them sweaters right um and uh some some person with larger glasses than it looks like she's wearing at the moment. Um, we, uh, 
we, we wrote about this very subject um, and you can read about this in the in, in the Incura magazine, um, but you don't need to because we're telling you all about it now. So yeah, but but writing might might be the thing for you because it might fit your personal style. You can fit it in whenever you want. And so you don't necessarily have to interact with people. Um, so yeah, where to do it? Well, in Cura Magazine, it's a fairly easy in. Uh, I don't want to say they're always looking for stuff, but they're quite often on the lookout for things. And they are always looking for new authors because they don't like to hear the same thing over and over again. So um, each section um, has uh, its own sort of editor and there's an overall editor. Just uh, just reach out. If you're an Incura member, you'll 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 see uh, that you know, the calls for here are the upcoming issues. These are the sort of things we're interested in. Yeah, maybe think about that. Um, SRI has a uh, sort of a, um, a similar thing, but it's online. It's the catalyst. So that's probably an even lower bar to entry because you don't need to worry too much about formatting and so on. Uh, yeah, it's an online blog post. Again, why why not try writing something for one of the different uh, uh, associations? You know, if you ha want to write something that you know about, then you probably know perhaps a lot about US funding. Do you know a little bit about US funding for people outside the US? Then if so, then the people who want to hear that are people outside the US. So maybe consider writing something for the European Association magazine newsletter or the UK protagonist or something. So it, it comes back to that kind of what do you know? What are you good at? Um, it, you know, if you think, well, there's lots of people who know the same as me, well, actually, that probably means there's lots of people who know almost the same as you, and you've therefore got a big audience for people who are interested in what you're writing because they know roughly the same, but a different aspect. If there's nobody uh, who interested in what you write, then actually that means that you're the only person who knows about it. And so actually then there will be people interested. It may not be a huge number of people, but you know, you don't want a network of a huge number of people. You want you want four or five people. So yeah. Yeah, just just think of that as a as a potential uh, route to expanding your network. Uh, you know, your 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 name is uh, is listed there. People read it, and then when it comes to the next time, oh yeah, I'm sure didn't Simon write something about that? I'll have a word with him, and and so that sort of network building becomes sort of proactive two way. Um, I've put at the bottom there in italics, JRA, RMR, JORMA. So that's the Journal of Research Administration, uh, which is the SRA journal, uh, the Research Management Review, which is the Cura journal, and the Journal of Research Management Administration, which is not affiliated to any particular association, um, uh, but sort of conflicts of interest alert. Uh, I am an editor of that, and it's obviously the best of the three journals, even though it is the newest. Um, there is a higher barrier of entry to those because it's they are you know uh, academic journals and so you need to uh, you know, have collected data in some way or write about something or have a theoretical concept or something um, and as I mentioned at the start if you're interested or you've got an idea or you've got a project half done um, think about the uh, the SRA eyes uh, the SRAI J R A A F P. <laughs> That's lots, lots of TLAs for you there. Uh, it's the Author Fellowship Program, which I mentioned. Uh, you have just missed the boat for this year. The the projects uh, kick off in January, but there'll be a call uh, in probably September or so. Deadline in November, December for uh, tell us you know, your idea, what you're doing, um, and what support you would like. And you would be then paired up uh, with someone to uh, support that process over a six or nine month period. Um, is there a cost associated with the JRA, RMR, and JORMA? They are all diamond open access. Uh, and what that means is it's free for authors and free for readers. So they are my favorite sorts of journals. So great question. Cool. Sorry, I saw some things um, popping up in the chat. Nothing I need to address. I can skip on. Oh, you're good. Cool. Uh, and... There we go. Oh, some duckies. They're cute. <laughs> so, um, committees. Uh, Melinda talked about a few committees and uh, that she's been involved in, and I kind of mentioned a couple of committees that I've been um, involved in. I mentioned the, uh, the Metric Tide one. Um, the reason I got invited onto the Metric Tide committee be was because I was on another committee. And so it, the thing about committees is that quite often uh, they are the ones which are um, 
in some way directing research or research management or, or whatever it might be. So directing some sort of activity, um, your name gets mentioned because you're listed as a committee member. Um, and then when somebody is perhaps looking for someone to speak on something, it's the, oh, well, that person's on the committee as such and such. Perhaps they might like to you know, to contribute and, and speak on that. And then so that sort of builds your profile, if you like, incrementally. Um, the other good thing about committees is you, you get to meet a lot of like-minded people because the reason that they're on the committee is because they want to give something back. They have some expertise. And if the committee is on, uh, well, I don't know, research assessment or something, then they're interested in the same thing that you are interested in. So it's a good way uh, to, to, to meet people. It's a very low cost in terms of time uh, for a network because you don't have to sustain the network so whoever is organized in the committee just sends you a reminder every three months say don't forget the next meeting is such and such and you have to read some papers and so on um, so yeah i would say that uh, committees are a really good way of, of doing that uh, and i've got here sort of uh, begin at a uh, regional local level um, make your interests known and if we have connect with uh, colleagues in similar positions in other organizations well actually or interesting positions things that you're uh, interested in if you like um so uh, i don't know a bizarre thing that happened to me not really bizarre i was on the incura select committee for global affairs and one of the other uh, uh people on on that and had never met him before uh it's called um uh Abby Adon from um uh from nigeria and he was halfway through writing a paper and wanted some some help on on some of the statistics and so on and that was something that i had a little bit of expertise uh in and so we ended up working together and ended up uh, uh co-authoring this paper about um research management support in in african universities so yeah so that was great uh, Another of my favorite examples was um, uh, for my work uh, on the uh, armor board uh, before I became chair, I was you know, often putting myself forwards to present on various things. And then because of that, when one of our, um, uh, we have a thing called the Association of Commonwealth Universities, which is um, uh, sort of a lot of English speaking countries around the world. And um, they wanted some uh, people to present um, what was research management uh, and particular on research management ethics as it, as it happens um, uh, to, to people from countries from, from all around the world. And so um, I was selected on that and I uh, got to meet the person who was uh, uh, sort of chairing that work. Um, and we did that a few times. Uh, about 10 years later, I, I met him again um, at, a, at a conference and uh, he said, ah, oh, yeah, Simon, yeah, I was, I, I, are you still sort of, uh, you know, doing those sort of outreach activities and so on? Uh, I've got a, um, a university who'd quite like uh, some support um, in developing their sort of research office because they they don't have one now. So they want to they want to pay a consultant, but they haven't got much money. Um, so you know it, it's quite quite a low fee. Uh, you know, and you'd have to spend about a week out there. Or something. I don't know, John. I don't really want to do it. Do it. He goes, it's the University of Mauritius, and I thought, oh, Mauritius. That actually sounds like quite a nice place to visit. Yes, thank you very much. So I would never have done that if I hadn't been on the board and hadn't gone to that. So it's just a question of sort of uh, doing those volunteering things, if you like. And um, yeah, OK, I mean, I can give you another thousand examples, but uh, we'll probably move on and I will uh, uh, go into those if we run out of uh, things to talk about. So I'm a little bit concerned because Melinda seems to have disappeared off my uh, uh, screen. I don't know if she's still there or not. Uh, it seems that we lost her. Okay, well, maybe the snow has arrived. So, wow. Okay. In that case, I will uh, carry on talking, but this is now Melinda's slide. So it's a little bit worrying. Uh, I'll, I'll, just in case she comes back quickly, I'll, I'll just give you another um, another example. Uh, I mentioned the uh, Incura Global F Fellowship, which is where I went to uh, Columbia and, and met Jamie. Um, so the 
the reason why I found out about that was because I was at a conference and I got speaking to somebody. I had no idea uh, who she was. It turned out she was one of the ex-presidents of Incura and she told me about this fellowship scheme and uh, I said, oh, well, that sounds interesting. So, you know, um, uh, you know I applied for that and, uh, and I got that. I would never even known about the scheme if I hadn't had this conversation and, and just have to be speaking to someone uh, you know, at the at the opening reception. So it's a, it's a question of sort of, you know, th you know that networking and, and putting two and two together. Well, I don't want to uh, keep things sort of f from uh, progressing. So I will uh, I will steal some of Melinda's slides and then if she gets back, she can do my slides. That seems fair enough. Um, okay, so uh, reaching out. Um, this is kind of the theme that's been running through uh, the, the whole the whole presentation, I guess. So you know, reach out, uh, you know, and the volunteer and so on. So um, you know, I guess basically, if there's one takeaway from from this session, it, it is reach out. If you if you see something you're interested in, then 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 reach out. If you see or hear someone talking about something you're interested in, um, reach out. Um, if you attend a conference session, you find it compelling and or humorous. <laughs> maybe well yeah reach out you guessed it if you if you read an article or a study on something that you or your college or your university are focused on and you think it's interesting can you guess yep reach out so i guess the bottom line is establishing new and unique contacts for your network it enhances your job and probably makes your social life more interesting as well um i i know it has for me and i'm pretty sure it has for for melinda because i'm i'm such a funny guy yeah um so uh, I'm just looking at, at Melinda's notes here and I'll, I'll see if I can do it in her. No, I won't try and do it in her voice. So basically she was saying in 2020, she was adjusting to the, you know, the, the life of uh, working at home and attending every webinar. And uh, she recounts attending an Incura webinar on uh, managing the new working from home lifestyle. Uh, she says here, one of the presenters was hilarious. Listening to him present, I realized I was laughing out loud for the first time since quarantine began. Uh, I copied his email from the contact us slide at the end of the presentation and sent him a quick email, letting him know how he brightened my day and made me feel optimistic about working from home. I can't believe I'm reading this. Uh, he responded with a LinkedIn invitation. And now Simon, yes, this, this Simon, uh, and I have been friends for almost two years and have co-presented many times. You just never know what reaching out can lead to. And apparently it can lead to hearing lots of bad jokes and uh, presenting uh, lots of things, which you probably didn't think you were going to have to. Okay, did that advance? No. So um, as you can see, uh, flamingos. So this was obviously one of Melinda's slides, because I'm sure you all know that uh, for, uh, again, in Cura Region 3, uh, it's um, flamingos are the motto. Um, so uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, to be fair, Melinda makes me laugh a lot as well. But I'm not laughing so much when she, she leaves me presenting on my own, but speed dating and she's walked out on me. It's a metaphor, isn't it, I think. So anyway, so she emailed me, um, yeah, and I did email Mac and I did the LinkedIn thing. Um, normally I have a rule that I only link in with people that I've met, but I mean, um, I don't know. It's pandemic. I'm not going to meet anybody ever again. Uh, so yeah, I just said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and we also connected on Twitter. We didn't connect on, on Instagram because uh, I'm not on Instagram, so I don't need another another social media channel. So we, I guess that goes back to uh, Ian's uh, Ian's point about. Um, not spreading yourself too thinly. So I'm also not on Facebook. I think I'm the only person in the world not on Facebook. Um, so yeah, be, be a little bit selective, otherwise you don't get any work done at all. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I, I know most of Melinda's family. Um, not that I've actually seen any of them, but I'm, I'm talking here about her dogs and cats. <laughs> I've seen many of her actual family. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, we just keep that, that contact going i guess yeah we, we get on pretty well and it's something you know that we enjoy and um we, we end up working together on uh, quite a few projects now including rap3 did i mention rap3 there'll be another link again at the end of the survey just in case uh so yeah um so like uh like working with uh, melinda there's been plenty of other research administrators uh, that i've worked with over the years and a lot of them just become friends for life and you know uh, just you know we all seem to have 
different traits that attracted us to the profession, but we all seem to have a similar sort of outlook on life. We yeah, we want to help and support each other. We want to collaborate. We want to do the best. Uh, and so I just think that, you know, there aren't many research administrators that I don't get on with. Oh, she's not here. I can say, oh, it's been recorded. Yeah. And, and I get on with Melinda really well. Um, so, so yeah. Um, another I, example. Apologies, oh. My computer crashed. That's a first. I, I apologize to everyone. That's the first time your computer's ever crashed. Is that what you're During saying? During a presentation. Oh, uh, okay. It wasn't a job interview, right? <laughs> uh, or perhaps it was a job interview that you had to step out for. No. And you didn't want anyone at Clemson to know. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. No, it's definitely not. Okay. Uh, so, Sorry. Melinda, so I've, I, I've, I've done one of your slides and I'm sure. now stealing this one on uh, maintain contact and I, I was going to give a, another couple of examples. I, we are running close towards communication time, so unless anybody's desperate to hear about how I uh, uh, ended up uh, doing RAP1 or how I ended up on the um, IAMA conference committee or anything like that, yeah, I, I can give you uh, th those, those examples, but I think it's time for Melinda to say, do you know what? I think let's we do. Should, let's have a poll. Let's have a poll. All right. And I will stop my share. Okay. And I still don't have my computer completely up, but here we go. Ah, so. I think it's. Have you introduced yourself on Incura's Collaborate Global Community Forum? Yes, I am well on my way to establishing my global network. B, not yet, but I plan to. C, no, I don't intend to use and cure as collaborate to build my network. Or D, what is this collaborate of which you speak? Simon, have you voted? Uh, no, I haven't voted because I'm trying to uh, look, look at the chat and I'm also trying to keep my dogs quiet, which you can hear in the background now, but it's better than a computer crash, right? <laughs> Pretty much anything, unless your stomach started to growl audibly, and that would be other entertainment, I guess. All right. And I also, I also note that I said that I'm not on Instagram uh, or Facebook, but apparently uh, Region 3, very big on Instagram and Facebook and, and not so much on Twitter. So uh, do follow uh, Region 3. Uh, yep. Lainey is also available for other gigs. <laughs> Lainey is wonderful at what she does. I think she recently stepped down from the social media coordinator for Region 3, um, but you did a fabulous job at that. In fact, she won an award for it um, this past year. Yeah, she's the big cheese. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was bamboozled. <laughs> you did a great job. I know that was a very time-consuming volunteer position, and I think that's what's you know, it, that goes back to Ian's question about, you know, balancing work and life and your real job versus all of the committees and, and professional organizations that you sign up to volunteer for. You have to really love what you do or it's just going to be a grind. So it looks like we have 15 responses. 40% um, say, what is this collaborate of which you speak? <laughs> so um, if you are not an Incura member, that makes sense. Um, but the, the global community is open to anyone. Um, there are several other um, threads on the forum that are also open to non incura members. It's just a great place to meet other research administrators um, all over the world. Yeah, and just to say, there's this comment here, I, I'm not an incura member. and. That, that, so it's really good that you point out, uh, Melinda, that, that yeah, yes, the uh, the collaborate global community uh, is open to anybody, uh, unlike most of the collaborate communities. Uh, but there is, of course, a, the res admin list as well. That is true. And thank you, Karen. Yes, uh, uh, SRI Connect as well. Yes, and I'm sure that Nord have something similar, but I also am not a member, so I don't know. <laughs> and back to the slides. before my computer crashes again. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so, well, uh, practical next steps are, tell us which is the cutest dog there. And, you know, we don't need to do a poll for this because it's obviously Barney in the middle. Um, so yeah, uh, 
should you think that it might be worth connecting with us, here are our contact details. Uh, those are our LinkedIn uh, uh, sort of profiles, but obviously just type in the name uh, uh, or Twitter. Uh, you can probably find Melinda on Instagram if you so wish. Um, I'm on but... Instagram, but I've dumped Facebook. So okay. neither of us are on Facebook. Simon is very active on Twitter. I am not. <laughs> so. Cool. And so, yeah, I, there these are these are kind of good places uh, to start I, I i'm finding linkedin is actually quite useful now whereas about five years ago it, it was the only thing it was useful for was finding out when someone had got a new job not an unuseful thing um but it's now quite good for sharing work related uh issues um yeah and yes middle dog absolutely uh so just looking at the uh, sri connect and pamela's member of sra yeah fine um oliver and very discerning thank you um and uh yeah linkedin a lot for uh, professional networking uh, so i mean in terms of those sort of practical next steps uh also just maybe think about setting up a plan for well what could you do what might you want to do um I, yeah, we, we have done a sort of a, a, a workshop version of this where we put together a plan uh, if sort of, you know, for, for, for each person as well. Where do you want to be and how do you want to get there? And, and so that's more that's more to do with uh, uh, getting promotion, professional development rather than just building your network. This is um, more informal. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, you, know, you might you might want to think about that in terms of that in terms of that takeaway is well, maybe I've heard some interesting ideas there, uh, and but we are, what are my next steps want to be? And going back to Ian's point, um, don't take all of the steps because you've only got two feet. And yeah, I think I'm making a horrible metaphor issue there. So, uh, Slido again. Wow, it seems like we've only just had one. Okay, is it, there we go. Do you already have an international network of correct connections, corrections? <laughs> I'm still on laptop crash. Yes, I have an established network. B is some, but I'd like to expand it. C, but I would really like, no, but I'd really like to, or D, no, I don't really see the value in an international network. If we get 100% D, we're in trouble. Uh, yeah, if we have any D, we're in trouble, maybe. I don't know. Seven respondents. Okay, it looks like so, the majority, even if we had several more people to chime in, is going to be no, but I would really like to. I want to meet the person who's A. Is that just one person? I don't know. It could be a couple. Yeah, 12. Yeah, if it's, if it's 12 respondents, it's one person. Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, right. Well, we are just about on uh, where we want to be time wise because we're saving our uh, sort of 10 minutes for discussion at the end. And this is more or less the end. Thank goodness I hear you cry the next time we do a, a swap like that. Uh, yeah, so um, before we move on, if yeah. um, I know that a lot of people are not. Um, on Encura's Collaborate, but Simon and I started a thread there that picked up a lot of momentum. In fact, I think it's the most um, visited thread in the forum um, that introduces people. You just kind of give a brief overview of who you are, what your interests are, and what your professional role is in research administration. And we've connected a lot of people I'm not taking credit for it. I'm just saying that we have been able to connect with a lot of people and they have also been able to connect. So if you're at all interested, we're not promoting Incura over any other organization. It's just that that happened to be the most user-friendly forum that was open to non-members also. Yeah, yeah, good Probably point. Probably drop that link in the chat. Let me see if I can find it. All right, yeah. well, go ahead. Cool, okay, yeah. So, uh, I mean, here we are, more or the last slide. Uh, one of the things that you might want to do is consider going to a conference and uh, there we are sra conference at top uh, this is their new virtual um uh, international uh, conference on research administration uh it's um 
1st to the 3rd of March, which sounded like a long time away, but it's probably only going to be about five or six weeks or something. Um, so that's uh, three days. It's specifically aimed uh, at the international audience. Uh, so there'll be a lot of international people there. So uh, good uh, for US people who want to meet a lot of international people. Of course, you are most welcome to come to the uh, physical fingers crossed, uh, European Association um, uh, Conference, which is in Oslo um, at the beginning of May, um, mainly uh, Europe, uh, European there, probably about 30 countries uh, being represented, and a lot of sauna, and um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Also, uh, an escape room, a themed escape room about uh, research administration. Mm. So uh, also uh, in Cura, there's a specific region eight, which is SRAI has the equivalent, the international region. Um, so again, uh, if you wanna go uh, to not very far and find lots of international people, uh, then the Washington conference um, or indeed the SRA conference, um, the actual, hopefully again, uh, fiscal one, which will be in October. And if you really, really wanna go hugely international, then the umbrella organization, the association of associations that is I norms, the International Network of Research Management Societies, every two years holds, holds a conference. Uh, there'll be about a thousand people and it's in Durban in South Africa. And Incura and SRAI are both members of iNorms, correct? Yes, exactly. Cool. Uh, okay, well, that is, I think, kind of where we wanted to be. Um, I'm not quite sure why we've got sheep at the end because sheep just follow other people and we're talking about branching out on our on our own. <laughs> oh, I Melinda, was, this this was your was joke. Sure. It's because keep in touch, keeping things warm, warm like a woolly, yeah, yeah, wool, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so definitely get to know people that you meet at conferences, meetings, volunteering, whatever, and, and keep it warm by keeping in touch with them, whether it's emailing or Zoom. We all know how to Zoom now, and it's so easy to just pop in and say hi for 15 minutes and just keep things current that establishes long-term relationships. You don't have to wear wool while you do it. Depends how cold it is, I guess. Uh-huh. And then there's our, uh, you're muted, Simon. Elena's here to cut us off or open for questions. There's some time for questions. If not, I'll be forced to tell a joke and you'll all be sorry. Please ask questions. <laughs> We're all invited to, uh, now I know how to say this, Louisville. Louisville. I was close. I was so close. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Region three for Incura meets in Louisville the first week in May. I think it's the week preceding the Kentucky Derby. Yes. Ooh. Melissa will be there too. I think we might be road tripping together, right, Melissa? Well, that's confusing. So Melissa oh. and Melinda. On a whiskey trail road trip. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> That, that, can I come? That sounds great. <laughs> I think it will be. I think you mean what could possibly go right. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, can I suggest that if you take a camera, then just stills, no video. That, that's my recommendation. And don't live tweet. <laughs> Thank goodness for masks. No cameras. <laughs> no cameras. What happens in Louisville stays in Louisville. Cool. OK, well, I'm going to stop the share uh, so that people can uh, see each other and uh, speak out if they so wish to. Of course, this is the beauty of Zoom, isn't it? Everyone has actually gone to sleep or they've started doing the wrap three Perfect. questionnaire. Yeah, is. I'm going to chalk it up. If you haven't turned on your camera by now, then you're probably completing the questionnaire. And we appreciate that. Yeah. We've All stunned right. everyone into silence. All right, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for attending. Um, this session was recorded and the, um, will be available at the end of the conference, um, along with the um, slides. So if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach to any of us.
And have a wonderful rest of the conference today and tomorrow is the last day. Thank you.